Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India looked at the intake components now uh, like a different kind of intake subsonic supersonic or helicopter and what are their configuration I mean obviously there are certain analysis pattern of the intake so one of the important thing for the intake is that uh, one need to take into account the losses in the intake and mostly those losses are uh, to some extent the aerodynamic losses that takes place because of the geometry now we are going to the next component which is combustor. Now combustor which actually sits in the system um, any gas turbine engine it is after compressor. So I mean some of the basic important feature for a uh, combustor which one would expect from a like a designer point of view it should provide uh, like complete combustion then uh, it should have moderate total pressure loss. So, then uh, stability of combustion process like then in flight relight ability this is very very important then proper temperature distribution um, distribution at exit with no hot spots then short length and small cross section we should have wide operating range of mass flow rate, pressure and temperature. Then uh, obviously uh, satisfying or satisfaction of environmental limits which is terms of emission. So, types of combustion chamber there could be main burner or the after burner like one can have main burner or after burner or uh, there could be subsonic or supersonic types depending on the speed of the air flow which could be subsonic or supersonic type or direct or reverse flow. Now subsonic combustion chamber may be further classified into three different types like multi can tubo cannular annular ones like one can see one here this is uh, different types of subsonic combustion chambers like you have multiple can sitting there then you have uh, tube annular sitting there you have annular there multiple cans so there sometimes these are uh, as tubular or can type combustion chamber it is used on centrifugal compressor engine like rolls royce pratt and whitney pt6 so, or now the number of combustion chamber is varying from 16 to 17 per stage. So, the advantage of the tubular type are the following mechanically robust. So, tubular combustion, tubular annular combustion, mechanically robust, fuel flow and air flow pattern are easily matched. Ring testing necessitates only small fraction, easy replacement and maintenance. So, 
Now, this is another one which was developed by Wittel W2B, this is a reverse flow kind of um, combustion chamber. You can see how they look like actually and there are so many components which are associated with this uh, combustor geometry, because um, these are very, very, I mean this is the one in any jet engine that produce uh, imparts that energy which is going to finally expand to um, the thing. Now, when you talk about this tubular, there are some disadvantage also, the tubular, the disadvantage which comes are that it is uh, bulky and heavy, that is one thing, high pressure loss, that is another thing, then it requires interconnector that uh, then large frontal area. Uh, so, and high drag. So, these are some of the problem like uh, nowadays uh, tubular can type is used in jet engines incorporating centrifugal compressor, axial power units and automotives. Now, now, you can see this is another tube annular kind of combustor, where you have this annular casing um, and then you have tube kind of combustor. So, so tube annular combustor type, uh, one of the cross section area would be like this. So, it also has now the, this type can be identified as the can annular or annular which is called can annular or annular type. It consists of series of cylindrical burners arranged within common single things. So, there are some of the advantages, mechanically robust. So, they are quite robust, then fuel flow and air flow patterns are, air flow patterns are easily matched ring te testing which uh, necessitates so the fuel flow and air flow air uh, flow patterns are easily matched then you have rig testing necessitates uh, necessitates only small fraction of total engine air uh, mass flow, then you can have shorter and lighter tubular chambers, low pressure loss. So, these are the advantage, but obviously, when there are some advantages, there could be some disadvantages too. And one is the less compact than annual, so less compact than annular, then requires connectors, then incurs problem of light round. Now, then we can see like this is, we can now going to see some annular combustion chamber. So, this is an annular type combustion chamber, which is a single flame type and chamber where completely annular in form, which is contained like in inner and outer casing. So, this 
actually normally this type is used uh, many engines using axial flow compressor and also other in incorporating dual type compressor. So, it has a history since 1940s, but till I mean now the annular combustors are fitted in GCF6, G9G, Pratt and Whitney JT9D, PWD4000, RRRB211, Trend series, B2500 series. So, there are obviously quite a bit of um, advantages which are associated with that uh, like it has minimum length and weight, minimum pressure loss, then you have minimum engine frontal area, less wall area, less wall area than can can canular and thus cooling air is required is less so the combustion efficiency also increases unburned fuel is reduced oxidizes the carbon and carbon monoxide or nitric oxide easy light around design simple or design combustion zone uniformity permitting better mixing of the of fuel and air simple structure compared to can burner. So, simple structure compared to can burner, then increase durability, How obviously these are listed advantage then always one can have some disadvantage also like uh, serious uh, bucking problem on outer liner on outer so so, this is a buckling problem, rig testing, testing needs full engine air flow, then must remove the engine from the aircraft to disassemble for maintenance and overall. So, maintenance is also not that easy. So, maintenance, so it has to be now one can uh, see there are components of the combustion chamber there are different components so you can have like um, casing or the case so just in schematic if i draw let's say um, this goes goes like this mm. ok. So, so that is how it goes that is the center line then we have another casing comes here then we have this 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 
then just so this is an just in schematic of that. So, there could be hole, then so essentially you have these are sweller, there we can have So, this is compressor guide vein, this is turbine guide vein, then you have diffuser here, this is fuel nozzle, this is swell, then um, there are cooling slot along this, these are secondary hole, there could be secondary holes here, then uh, dilution holes. So, there are multiple just just an schematic of that. So, it has an uh, one of the important is casing. So, the casing is the outer shell of the combustor which has fairly simple structure and need little maintenance, but the it is protected from the thermal load by air flowing on it. So, the mechanical load is driving the design. So, then diffuser. So, the purpose of this diffuser is to slow high speed highly compressed air from the compressor to a velocity which is probably optimal for the combustion chamber uh, to avoid any um, uh, losses, total pressure loss and, and, this and also the avoid any combustion flame stability. So, diffuser must be designed to limit uh, the flow distortion as much as possible. Then one could have liner, the liner contains the combustion process and introduces various inflows. So, these are very important component because the thermal load on the liners are quite, then you can have snout which is the extension of the dome, then one can have dome or sweller these are used for the better fuel air mixing. So, it imported the tangential component or velocity, then you have fuel injector. So, this is another important component where the fuel is injected because the injector it plays a very, very critical role because how good the injector is that find the fuel spray can be produced and then that would have lot of impact on the flame structure and obviously the other aspect then igniter. So, most igniters in gas turbine application are electrical spark igniters similar to that automotive spark plugs. The igniter needs to be in the combustion zone where the now if you look at the aerodynamic of the combustion chamber. So, the important part of this is the diffuser. So, the diffuser could be of different type like it could be 2D, could be equi angular, this could be straight core annular, then this is conical. Now, the straight wallet diffusion may be defined in terms of three geometric parameters like A r which is area ratio, geometric length L or axial length N divergence angle 2 theta. So, for 2D diffuser, AR would be 1 plus 2L by W1 sin theta. For conical, AR is 1 plus 2L by R1 sin theta plus L by R1 sin theta whole square. For annular, 
area ratio is delta R2 by delta R1. So, where so this is what the schematic that I was trying to draw and AR is delta R2 by delta R1, where delta R1 is the uh, is the annulus height at diffuser inlet. So, now then straight core annular the area ratio is 1 plus 2 L by delta R 1 sin theta plus L by delta R 1 sin theta square. And then if it is can annular and annular diffuser then aspect ratio could be 1 plus 2 L by delta R 1 sin theta i plus sin theta naught plus L by delta R 1 sin theta i plus sin theta naught whole square. So, you can just see there, there is a diffuser, nozzle, dome, cooling slot, swell, primary. So, there will be different combustion zone, primary, intermediate, dilution you have dilution swell where the again air is injected, you have cooling slots or lever holes this called flame tube wall, then you have primary zone. So, now uh, one dimensional incompressible flow analysis what we can write that m dot equals to rho a 1 u 1 equals to rho 2 a 2 u 2. So, a 2 by a 1 would be u 2 by u 1 equals to aspect area ratio, C p is P2 minus P1 by Q1, where Q1 is rho U1 square. So, we can static pressure rise in the diffuser, we can write Q1, P1 plus Q2 plus delta P diffuser, where P2 minus P1 equals to Q1, 1 by A R square minus delta P difference. Now, in an ideal diffuser, so, there are no losses, no loss. So, we can write P 2 minus P 1 uh, ideal equals to Q 1 1 minus area ratio square. So, C P ideal P 2 minus P 1 ideal by Q 1 which is 1 by square. So, overall effectiveness of the diffuser which could be estimated as C p major by C p ideal which is C p by 1 by area ratio square. So, that is how basically I mean one can draw this just this is non dimensional length n by r 1 by diffuser angle 2 theta. So, the curve goes like uh, this. So, this is varying or rather increasing trend of the C p star. So, C p star is the locus points and the that define the diffuser divergence angle producing the maximum pressure recovery in a prescribed non dimensional length. So, this is a qualitative curve that one can look at it. Now, the other thing that is important is the combustion kinetics. So, though we are using different different uh, fuel, so the kinetics is going to play a role because this is what is going to tell us whether you will have. So, the important parameters when one has to know that theoretical air or stoichiometric air, then extra air less air. So, which is uh, lean mixture, rich mixture like that and any um, for in general if you burn C x H y plus 
O2 plus uh, N2, it is going to produce CO2, H2O and but if you have incomplete combustion that time you start producing CO and all this and uh, this is the stoichiometric coefficient for all this. Now, when you define an equivalence ratio that is like fuel by year actual by fuel by year stoichiometric. So, lean condition fuel lean condition lean mixture is phi less than 1 stoichiometric mixture that is phi equals to 1 and uh, rich mixture which is phi greater than 1 and fuel air ratio. Um, so, in the other way fuel to air ratio F and F stoichiometric. So, we can write is F by F stoichiometric. So, to prevent excessive temperature at the exit of the main burner or the after burner to protect its wall, the overall fuel air ratio must be less than stoichiometric. So, that is, but this is what going to play an important role because what kind of combustion that we do because of the reactions and all this there could be uh, productions of the product. So, now the performance or combustion chamber performance what we can see have pressure loss combustion efficiency combustion stability combustion intensity. So, these are the important parameter. So, pressure loss factor can be calculated like if someone wants to calculate the pressure loss factor like P L F which could be calculated delta P naught by m square by 2 rho 1 a m square where m is the air flow rate, m is the maximum cross section area, rho 1 is the inlet density like this. Now, similarly combustion efficiency, so that is eta b which can be written as f air flow rate to the power 1 by evaporation rate plus 1 by mixing rate plus 1 by reaction rate to the power inverse. So, that is how one can define the burner efficiency. Then combustion stability which means smooth burning and ability of the flame to remain alight over a wide operating range and for any particular time of combustion chamber there are both reach and weak limit for the fuel beyond which. So, one can see that limit here, this is how one can define that um, beyond a limit the combustion could be stable or it could be unstable. So, this is what is going to be important. Then obviously, there are other stuff like material, what kind of material is used because combustion chamber has to withstand high temperature. So, different kind of, so you need proper material to withstand the temperature especially one is the chamber material, then you have liner materials and all these, then fuels or aircraft fuel, there are different kind of fuels which are used. So, that is also an important type because every fuel has its different burning capability. Then another important aspect of the combustion chamber design is the emission or pollutant. So, the design should be such that like emission like CO, unburned hydrocarbon, NOx, uh, SOx, these are should be as reduced as possible. But again if you look at it, these components are all connected with the kind of fuel you are doing and then kind of mix, uh, mixing that takes place and then the kind of combustion you have. 
then finally you can have after burner where it is a different kind of fuel injector or fuel like kind of uh, different flame holders because again this is the uh, this use in the military applications where you are going to use extra or second round of burning. So, these are the um, kind of uh, important things that one has to need uh, to take into account while designing the combustion chamber. So, um, we will stop here and continue the discussion on the nozzle and the other things in the next class.